Hey you guys, it's John D with EFIT Tracker and we're back with another HP touchpad video. This time we're going to answer the question, is it worth overclocking my HP touchpad? So what I have here on the left is a brand new 16 gig HP touchpad that I purchased about two days ago. And here on the right is um, another HP touchpad that we purchased about month and a half ago. So I bought this on launch date. There might not be um, too many differences. I, I really doubt if there are. So what I did before we begin this uh, comparison, I turned off Wi-Fi and the reason why is, um, we'll turn it back on later, but the reason why is there's too many different um, variations when you compare two devices, especially at the same frequency. But first, what I'd like to do is open up similar apps. As you can see, these two devices have identical applications. And whether you should overclock your touchpad, it's really up to you. I, I believe if you are going to play games, if you're going to be multitasking a lot, opening up applications that require speed and a lot of demand on the processor, yes, probably going to be worth your while to overclock it. However, if you don't need all that fancy stuff, you're not playing too many games, you're, you're happy with the games that you're playing with, it plays great games at 1.2, by the way, then I wouldn't take the risk on doing it. But um, here's a quick comparison. We're going to open up Angry Birds, and you can see the difference. We'll open it up three times. Ready? And as you can see, the overclock touchpad wins by a fraction. Okay, let's do it two more times just to be sure you guys are convinced that the overclock device is faster. This is a game, so this is a high uh, demand application. So here we go. Whoa, neck and neck. Okay, but the overclock touchpad on the right still wins. Okay, one more time. So, so far, underclock or 1.2 gigahertz, zero. 1.5 gigahertz, two. Ready? Last round. Okay. Obviously, that was a that was a wide margin on that last one. All right. Next, next application I'm going to open up is something that requires the internet, but um, you can still open it up. I'm going to open up Where to Eat. Okay, ready? Here we go. Neck and neck. Okay, I believe uh, it's neck and neck. Let's do it again. Where to eat and... Okay, so 1.5 gigahertz wins on this round. So, so far, a draw and zero one for the 1.5 gigahertz. Last round. And the 1.5 gigahertz wins again. So there is a difference. It may not matter to most of you, but in the long run, um, if you're doing a lot of work, you may save an extra couple minutes at the end of the day. So let's do another uh, application. All these are not connected to the internet, by the way. This last one is going to be Epicurious, which is a high demand application. Here we go. Ready? Epicurious. Okay, it looks like, wow, the 16, the 1.2 actually beat it. Okay, let's try it again. neck and neck and the winner is the 1.5 so there are some flukes uh, and that's the reason because WebOS is built on HTML JavaScript and CSS and I know most of you don't know what that means but there are a lot of variants variants variances in speed one more time this is for the win neck and neck and 1.5 overclock device wins the third round. So, so far, can you guys see the difference? Um, 
Now I'm going to turn on, let's turn on um, Wi-Fi. Now my connection on Wi-Fi here is not that great. So I may have to go back to this if it doesn't connect. Plus, you might get some interference because both of these are running on the same frequency. Um, so let's open up something that requires the internet. How about um, the browser? Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay, 1.5 wins. Um, how about we open the browser one more time? And this time, okay, 1.5 wins again. Let's go to a website. Let's go to usetracker.com, which is my website. Okay, ready? And the winner is the 1.5 gigahertz again. So it looks like a sweep. Pretty much looks like a sweep for the 1.5 overclocked HP touchpad. Okay, this is round two, HP touchpad 1.2 gigahertz versus HP touchpad 1.5 gigahertz overclocked. What I'm gonna do is open up a bunch of applications and uh, let's see how it performs under pressure with all these applications opening and with a little bit of multitasking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and random do this. Let's open up, uh, let's see, calculator. Next, Kindle. Okay, it's moving right along. How about uh, memos? Wow, 1.2, one on that one. Moving on, uh, let's go to, what else we got here? Okay, how about the HP catalog? It should be an interesting one because um, both of them require the internet. One of them is probably going to load a different page because I don't know why. Probably because it's a newer model. Oh, I'm, my bad. Same page. Okay, moving on. How about a website? Um, let's go to Weatherbug. Or a weather application, I should say. A little slow there, and that's probably because I have to gather information. Okay, moving along. About device info. And what else do we have? Um, translator. Okay. As you can see, the 1.5 gigahertz is outperforming, outperforming, well, that was interesting. Okay, so we got a bunch of applications going on. Let's uh, try and see if there's a difference in navigating. All right, let's uh, open up a YouTube video. How's that sound? YouTube, here we go. Going neck and neck. Uh-oh, 1.2 is winning. But you know what? This is where there's variances because they may not open up the same page with the same graphics. In this case, it did. Okay. See, there's different videos on the bottom here, so there's a lot of variances. Let's play the same video. Okay, as you see there, V 1.5 has won many of the rounds. So it's up to you guys if uh, you guys want to do this. Uh, my next video is how to install or how to overclock your device. Hope you guys like this video.